Hey, hey you, are you looking for a tanky boy? A beefton to outbeef all beeftons while still doing enough damage to comfortably clear all endgame content from Uber Elder to Awakener 8. Then I welcome you to the Rajas Fire Mjolnir Chieftain Mayor Tank Build Guide. But Yuji, aren't you a melee player? Why are you not playing a slam build? This is a slam build, just a different kind. It is not good at slamming, but at taking slams. And if you are now curious how I achieve these levels of tankiness, where even a rare pack of legion mobs in a damage modded tier 16 map won't kill my character. Let me show you the ways of the beef. Just look at how horrible I'm playing that Uber Elder fight. I get away with being hit so many times and playing like crap. Isn't it a thing of beauty? But be warned, this is not a beginner build. This setup requires several very specific gear pieces and relies on a few interactions which might be a bit obscure for newer players to understand. But if you are a more intermediate Path of Exile player looking to broaden your build horizon, this might be the right character for you. As for the budget, the final setup for this build is very expensive. But I did leak start with this build in Harvest and farmed all the gear with this very character. I won't recommend you leak starting with his build, but I did leak start it and it can work, but I still won't recommend it. Nope. You might be able to pull it off, but if you don't, don't blame it on me. That's all I'm trying to say. I have linked my setup from day one of the league my setup after one week of the league and also the final setup of the character below this video so you can follow the gearing progression if you want to. I have also made videos for each of those steps explaining the choices at the given time. See below for all that extra information if you plan on making this character. But now let's dive into the build as it is finished right now. For damage I'm using a Mjolnir. It is a hammer that triggers socketed lightning gems on melee hit at the same time giving the skill a bunch of increased spell damage. Which is important, because we are using the Mjolnir to deal mostly fire damage. Yup, we are basically Fire Thor. That means we need to get a lot of attributes on your gear. For the main setup I'm using Cyclone with Cast While Channeling, or in this case the Awakened version, for a bit of a lower cooldown, Infused Channeling for the Infusion buff, Combustion for Shredding Enemy Resistances, as well as Awakened added fire level 5, because that doesn't only add a bunch of fire damage, but also grants plus 1 to the level of fire spell gems that are linked to it. And the spell we are triggering with the main setup is Purifying Flame, which is a physical skill that converts half of its damage to fire, and we also convert the other half of the fizz damage to fire, dealing only fire damage. In the Mjolnir I'm using Wave of Conviction. This is also a physical spell, but it converts 25% of its damage to lightning, making it a lightning spell, and 25% to fire damage, we convert the rest of the physical damage to fire as well, making it deal mainly fire damage, which leads to it shredding 25% of enemy fire resistance on hit. We link the wave with elemental focus for a nice damage buff, and awaken added fire level 5 for the plus 1 gems and the added fire damage. And if you look closely at all these setups, the infused channeling support gem for example gives us the infusion buff granting us 10% more damage with damage of the same type as the supported skill, which in this case is physical damage. So our main setup gives damage to the Wave of Conviction by giving us more physical damage globally. Combustion also shreds enemy resistances, which makes our Wave of Conviction stronger, not only the Purifying Flame it's supporting, and at the same time the Wave shredding resistances makes our Purifying Flame stronger. So basically both setups buff each other. There's also the Purifying Flame Helm Enchant that lets Purifying Flame apply an increased damage taken to enemies with the Consecrated Ground it provides, in turn also buffing the Wave of Conviction, but of course also itself. That way both of our main damage setups do quite a bit of damage. The Cyclone damage is not that important though. The Mjolnir I'm using has a Fortify on hit Corruption. That makes this Mjolnir cost 4-5 Exalted Orbs instead of 2 Chaos Orbs for a normal Mjolnir. While this does make the character very much more tanky, it is not needed until you want to run super juiced rippy tier 16s without dying to legion or tank shaper slams as shown before. It is a nice endgame upgrade, but nothing needed to start the build out. Just get the normal version of the hammer and build up from there. Important stats for any Mjolnir build. First of all get the attribute requirements out of the way. 
Then get some decent accuracy and attack speed. You want at least 90% hit rate and an attack speed as close to the proc rate of Mjolnir, which is 0.15 seconds, so, so that we can proc our wave of conviction as much as possible. This build fully buffed sits at around 0.18 seconds per attack, which I think is decent enough. Next on the gearing list, at some point you will want an explody chest for nice clears. Until you get that explody chest, which is by the way pretty easy to acquire in Harvest League, you can use a large cluster jewel with fire damage on it that can roll the cremator that allows you to destroy ignited enemy corpses, which in turn makes porcupines less rippy, which is something that usually would kill the build unless you have a corpse removal mechanic. We also use these stampede boots to get decent movement speed while cycloning, because with these boots cyclone no longer does slow you down and they give you basically a set 50% increased movement speed without any other movement speed investment. It also allows for a second anoint as they are a blight unique. The boots should be one of the first things you buy after the shield and the hammer. Oh, and by the way, for shield, we use a Saffold's frame, but more on that later. The boots are a really good choice to get early, because they improve your clear by quite a noticeable amount and allow you to feel good cycloning without running a quicksilver or silver flask. For anointments on the amulet, put Heart of Flame, but make sure you get a nice amulet first, as this needs a golden oil. It is the best damage anoint we can get on the tree. And on the boots, I put the anointment of Cleansed Thoughts, which makes gearing for Chaos Resist much easier, and we will need that for the Divine Flash later. But be careful, this also doubles negative Chaos Resist. So if you are still sitting at negative values of Chaos Res, wait till you anoint your boots. But once you are in the positive, this will simply double the value. As for Auras, I'm running Herald of Ash for deeps, and it also works really well with the Explody chest, Skitter Boys for Chill and Shock, which is also deeps, and some safety, a low level precision for some accuracy, some crit, but mainly for the Watcher's Eye mod, that gives us attack speed and a purity of fire for maximum fire resistance, as well as a defensive tool, because we take quite a considerable amount of our physical damage as fire damage, which we then mitigate via resistances. It also helps sustain righteous fire, and we also have a Watcher's Eye mod that we use with this aura. An Enlighten of around level 2 is needed to run all these auras comfortably. A higher Enlighten will allow you to level precision a bit higher. You can use two completely random rings and do all content with those. Those will cost you, for example, two chaos each, and if you do that, in your glove slot, put Repentance for a nice DPS boost, because you're not getting much DPS from your rings with this setup. I have done that, it works fine, I killed all the bosses in the game with this, just a bit slower than with a higher damage setup. You could invest a few more Chaos or even an Exalt each to get nice Opal rings with some fire damage on them, or maybe flammability on hit for some extra damage, still run Repentance gloves and still be fine and clear stuff a little bit faster. Or you can be stubborn like me and spend 8 Exalted Orbs per ring on 2 Circles of Anguish, which give you increased fire damage, as well as Herald of Ash buff effect, which gives you even more deeps, and it also synergizes insanely well with the Explody Chest, makes your clear super buttery smooth, but it also gives you nothing else the build really needs. So you will need to fix your resistance with a nice pair of rare gloves, and get some cold and lightning resistance here. But like, seriously, if you want to cut out any budget from this build, get rid of these 2 rings first. And if you then still want to cut some budget, uh, get rid of the Fortify Mjolnir. That makes the build over 20 Exalted Orbs cheaper. And it works perfectly fine without it. Like, I played this build to level 95 without any of these insane upgrades. I just wanted to see what the build can do maxed out. With that out of the way, and talking about getting out of the way, I'm running a dash setup, linked to a second wind, which makes moving around a lot smoother than any other movement skill, in my opinion. But it does put a 155 dexterity requirement on the build on top of all the crazy stuff you need for Mjolnir, Chaos Res for Divine Flash, and all the other stats and uniques you might want to crank in there. So if you want to have it easier, you can run Flame Dash, or Leap Slam, or Shield Charge, or just a lower level dash, but I like a higher level dash and so I made it work. Alright, let's go over to Defenses, because this is a tanky boy and it has a lot of defensive layers. First of all, against physical damage we take physical damage as fire damage from the Helmet, the Chief's and Ascendancy, the Shield Corruption and the Watcher's Eye, we get 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 8, which should come around to 33% of physical damage taken as fire damage, which then gets checked against our 85% resistance against fire, which makes this build pretty resistant against physical damage. 
We also gain endurance charges via a cluster jewel and have a cast when damage, damage taken, immortal call, increased duration setup. Next up, against elemental damage, we did not only have 85, 80, 80 and 90 resistance, the 90 not being against elemental but against chaos, but with the divine flesh, timeless keystone, we do take 50% of our elemental damage taken as chaos damage, but beware, that does not mean that we take part of the physical damage that we then take as fire damage, also as chaos damage. Damage taken as mechanics only work once, not twice. So the first damage we do, we take partially as fire damage, but not as anything else. But if we take direct fire, lightning or cold damage, we take half of that as chaos damage, which then gets mitigated by 90% chaos resistance and the other half by 80 or 85% resistance. And Divine Flesh works against Righteous Fire degeneration. That means that half of our RF degen gets reduced by 85%, and the other half by 90%. And the goal of this build for me was to run Righteous Fire and sustain it unbuffed, just standing there in my hideout without anything up. And that worked. Righteous Fire grants us mainly 40% more spell damage for both spells in our main setups. And in this setup it even works without Purity of Fire. So you could take off Purity of Fire, run Herald of Purity for more damage. That also means you either don't need an Enlighten or you can run a higher precision aura and gain a bunch of extra damage. But I want this to be a tanky boy, so I'm running the more defensive setup with Purity of Fire on. On Righteous Fire I did put two damage links with elemental focus and burning damage supports. And I'm also running an Empower which buffs the more damage multiplier slightly. And of course it is a Val Righteous Fire for the extra Val buff that we can activate during boss fights etc. But if you don't like that setup, you can run anything in these links. For example, Enduring Cry linked with Second Wind support and Urgent Orders, or an Infernal Cry that replaces your Explody chest until you get it. Anything goes here. I think the most insane part about this Righteous Fire setup is that buffed, after Righteous Fire, we still have over 2000 life regen per second. And on top of that also goes Life Leech. If we are fully buffed, we are regening insane amounts of life with Righteous Fire up, and we can turn it off at any time if shit hits the fan. One of the best things you can get that can enable you to get Righteous Fire going on your build faster is an Elder Belt that has an increased life recovery mod that rolls on eye level 75 and higher Elder bases. And with that I was able to get Righteous Fire online before specking into Divine Flesh even. And talking about Divine Flesh, the 90% Chaos res we have comes to be by the following 10% extra max res from Divine Flesh, then 4% from the Saffold's frame and 1% from a small cluster jewel with the anti-venom notable. This also has a lot of chaos resistance on all these nodes, making it way way easier to cap out our chaos resistance without putting too much strain on gear. As for limitations of the build, minus max resist map mods as well as less life regen and no life regen make it hard to impossible to run Righteous Fire unless continuously leeching. You can occasionally run such a map, for example if it is corrupted and you need to run it for completion, but on the regular you want to reroll these mods. Minus Max Resist does remove our main defensive mechanic against physical, elemental and chaos damage. So that's no bueno. Oh and uh, Elemental Reflect kills the build, but the rest of the mods are okay to run. As for leveling, I leveled this build as a Purifying Flame Marauder. I muled the Purifying Flame gem from a Templar and then I bought a Wave of Conviction as soon as I could use it in Act 2 from another player. Because Marauders don't get those gems. And then I leveled with that, which is a pretty decent leveling spec as a Chieftain, until around level 68 after Mercer's Lab, at which point I was able to equip Mjolnir by taking a lot of attribute nodes on the tree, actually allowing me to meet the stat requirements. As I mentioned, the Barebones League Starter 5 link early mapping setup is linked below the video. That's the actual gear I had on day 1 to day 2 of the league that allowed me to get through white and yellow maps pretty easily. Another very important point of this build is flasks. One thing to note is that you can run only one unique flask on this build until you get a Corrupted Blood Immunity Jewel, which allows you to drop a Staunching Flask to get a second unique flask running. And another general note, quality on flasks is important, so never try to cheap out on glass blowers. Never. Alright, Cinder Swallow Urn is great for damage, sustain, attack speed and the extra region on top is also nice. A serious promise adds extra leech and a lot of damage because it gives us chaos damage from our physical and our elemental damage, which we both do have plenty of. The Granite Flask of Warding is against mad mods etc. And the Ruby Flask is nice because it protects versus physical and fire damage and makes our RF do less damage, freeing up some regen. As mentioned, make sure to run a Silver Flask and a Quick Silver Flask as long as you are not running the Stampede Boots. As soon as you get those, the Speed Flasks will be useless. Well, except for the Silver Flask for the attack speed. Which is why Cinder Swallow's Onslaught is still useful for the build. And the Life Flask I'm running is actually a very important thing. 
it's a non-instant flask. And yes, an eternal flask here would be better, but I simply couldn't be bothered to change it yet. It removes burning, so it's a dowsing flask, which allows us to remove RF at the press of a button. And at the same time, because by disabling Righteous Fire we have stopped taking damage over time recently, giving us a whopping 50% increased life recovery, which is a great on-demand boost of recovery when we need it. So while you are, for example, cycloning into a dangerously looking pack, you can always just press your flask and turn Righteous Fire right back on for a huge boost. For Pantheons we take Shakira for the reduced chaos damage taken, which is great for Divine Flesh as we take half of all the elemental damage as chaos damage, which then gets reduced by 5%. And we do take Arakali mainly for the recovery rate buff I showed before, but it also reduces shock effect by 30%. Combined with the anointed flash cluster on the passive tree, I get to a total of 80% reduced effect of shock on the character. As for the other passives that we actually get, there's a lot of stuff going on on this passive tree as you can see. So let's start with the Ascendancy first. First I went to Ramako Sun's Light, which just gives really nice damage for leveling. The chance to ignite is nice with the combustion support. And damage for penetrates fire resistance is always a nice bonus as well. Secondly I went with Hinikora Death's Fury. The leech is really nice and the increased damage taken from the Covered Nash on top of the strength which makes taking and equipping an early Mjolnir a lot easier. So this is a really easy second choice. For third and the Mercer's Lab I went with Tassalio Cleansing Water. The 100% fire resistance makes it really really easy to uh, gear and cap resistance for early maps. The 10% physical damage taken as extra fire makes us extra tanky. The regeneration is nice for getting righteous fire online. And the increased life recovery rate, 50% when we take fire damage, is insane as a defensive bonus. Being unaffected by Ignite is kind of like a nice extra, but not really needed. And lastly, for the Uber Lab, we take Nagmahu's Flame as Advance. That converts almost all of the rest of Cyclone's damage into fire. We convert the spell damage way before we get this, so it's not an issue at all. The extra 100% physical damage as extra fire on a 4 second timer every 10 seconds is kind of nice to have, but this is mainly really great with the Explody Chest. But it is a nice temporary buff, and if it is up, it is very noticeable. So for all these crazy circles we are using, the first one is a Might of the Meek Jewel. This increases the effect of non-notable, so the small nodes, by a whopping 50%. This means this node now gives 7% increased max life instead of 5, for example. And this goes for all these nodes hit here, especially the attribute nodes give us a little bit of extra stuffs. And we get a little bit of extra life, we get a little bit of extra regen from this. I thought this was like a nice spot to use this in. And it also justifies the weird pathing that we are doing. Because as you noticed, we did not path through here, but all the way around here. And as you can see, there's like an orange outline here. And that is because all the way up here, we got a split personality. This jewel gives increased stats, or has an increased effect of the stats on it, which is plus 5 int and plus 40 accuracy per passive nodal between this cluster jewel or this jewel in this cluster jewel and the starting point of the class. This means, as you can see down here, this jewel gives us a whopping 58 intelligence and 470 accuracy rating because 43 passive, passive skills are in between this jewel and the starting location. This is why we are passing all the way this way around and not through here because this always tries to take the shortest, shortest route. Um, elongating these, this route, and this is also why pathing not through here but all the way around this gives us some nice int as well as accuracy. But it is also pretty useful because uh, there's some cold damage here because the Glorious Vanity, the Timeless Jewel, uh, converts all the nodes in here into random nodes. And I actually got pretty lucky, so uh, this number 1406 sacrificed in the name of Shibakwa, so if you don't know how these jewels work, the name of whatever is sacrificed or whatever in um, makes uh, makes out which keystone you get if there's a keystone in within this radius. And in this case it is Divine Flash as I said before. So you need this jewel to even get this keystone. And at the same time the random number makes uh, out what 
what happens to all these random small nodes. So in this case, I'm actually pretty lucky because there's a lot of useful stuff on my path. I get physical damage from here, fire damage from here, life from here, spell damage here, spell damage here. There's the only not useful one, which is uh, attack damage, and some armor on this one. So this one is actually pretty damn useful, uh, could have been much worse, but I, if this granted absolutely nothing here, yeah, I would still use it, because I will need Divine Flash. So this is a kind of like a nice bonus. If you can get a better one where even these uh, notables are useful, you can maybe even make a more powerful tree, of course. Um, the next shenanigans we do with the passive tree is put a Thread of Hope here. And this jewel uh, reduces elemental resistances as a downside, so we need some more alley res to equip this and not be uncapped. And we are using a medium ring, and it allows us to spec any node that is in between these two uh, rings here. And we take uh, Divine Fury, which is 5% physical extra fire, which is kind of like almost 5% more damage. Not really, but kind of like, at least from the physical side. Um, some elemental damage, some physical damage, and it converts 25 of our spells um, into fire damage, uh, capping out our conversion. This node used to be used to be much better with some penetration, but now it's 50% elemental damage. For one point, I think it's still very much worth taking. Um, arcane Capacitor gives us Arcane Surge on Kill, which gives us Arcane Surge while clearing. It also gives some mana that makes mana sustain a bit smoother and a bit more reliable, because we simply sustain mana by regenerating. Singular Focus gives us 25% increased effect of Infusion. The Infusion buff, as I said, is 10% more damage, so 25 is 2.5% more damage on top of the more damage we already have. It's also some attack speed, which is nice, and Cyclone damage, which doesn't matter at all. And there's Sanctum of Thought, reduced effect of Curses on us, which is nice, Armor, which is nice, but the, you take 20% reduced extra damage from Critical Strikes is something that can save you if you get crit in a crit map by... Um, for example, Legion monsters, which do a crap ton of damage to you. Um, other than that, we have Elemental Overload for some extra damage, because we're not Resolute Technique. Um, and we do keep this up very, very consistently, because we hit so often with two spells and Cyclone procking, uh, procking this very reliably. And I'm using Unwavering Stance, which makes it so I can get hit more reliably, which makes it uh, more like reliable to keep the 50% increased life recovery rate of this Ascendancy Tessalio up uh, most of the time, which is kind of nice to have as well. And also not being ab able to get stunned is, I think, uh, personally a great thing. Here's the Watcher's Eye that I talked about. It is 12% increased attack speed while affected by precision, which is a nice 12% attack speed on a jewel. Uh, on top of that, we take 10% of physical damage from hits as fire damage while affected by Purity of Fire. If you decide to not run Purity of Fire, you can uh, drop that, of course. Um, that's just a Corrupted Blood Jewel. Um, I decided to take like some useful stats, so increased damage and attack speed, which is a good stat for this build. But if you want, you can also get a better jewel here and get the Corrupted Blood on any unique jewel, for example on the Might of the Meek, the Glorious Vanity or the Therifo, but that will cost you a bunch of extra Exalted Orbs. Alright, for the Cluster Jewels, we're using an 8 point Fire Jewel, and I have, have Burning Bright and Widespread Destruction, both of which give mainly AoE and some elemental damage, which is why I use them. You could get a third one here, there's, I think, something of Draught <laughs> that gets uh, AoE as well, which is pretty nice. Also flammability, curse effect, if you're using that curse. Um, Cooked Alive, I think, is one of the better ones. Uh, minus 10 to Fire Rest to Ignited Enemies. We have almost 100% chance to ignite on Cyclone and on Purifying Flame, so basically everything we meet is always ignited. Um, so this is really, really good and very reliably up. Uh, and then on the other medium, this is a channeling skill damage jewel with four passives. Oh, by the way, this is a fire damage over time multiply one. Um, this is way, way harder to roll with two passives, which is why I only have one, but this is really the one you want. Um, yes, yeah, I, I have rapid infusion, 50% increased effect of infusion, which is 5% more damage from the infusion buff, which is good. The movement speed doesn't affect us because we're using stampede. And then there's Channeling Skills, deal 25% increased damage, doesn't do at anything at all, but Enduring Focus, 25% chance to gain an Endurance Charge each sec second while channeling, in our case Cycloning. This fuels the Immortal Call and is also just a generally a nice defensive layer against physical damage, and I already talked about this. The Chaos Rest we need to cap out, and there's lots of resist on stats and mana and whatnot on here to make um, gearing a bit easier. Yeah, if you can, cap out Chaos Res with 
a two pointer here, you can save a skill point and put it somewhere else. For example, into this air AoE node. Uh, I put this AoE node because there's it's probably the best thing I could spec at this point. Could also spec it into some life. By the way, in case you're wondering why don't why I have don't have this life node, I put it in here instead because that's six percent and armor that's five percent. That's better. Um, yeah, as for leveling uh, early on, I rushed for this to convert all my fire damage, and then I rushed to EO to get some more damage. Then I picked up all this damage, I passed through here and picked up these damage nodes as well in the last bit of conversion without the Thread of Hope uh, while leveling just like route here and be done with it. And then you basically fill up some life, um, fill up some either jewel sockets or some damage as you go. If you can get early cluster jewels, good. If not, then don't bother. And then I picked up some uh, attack speed and accuracy down here, which is nice. Once you get into Mjolnir, there's also some accuracy here, which makes the Mjolnirring a lot smoother early on. And as I said, take all the attribute nodes you need while leveling. Like take, you can take precision, you can take mana flows, you can take all these like 30 nodes, 30 dex, 30 int, uh, 30 dex here. Even if you need 30 strength, take that as well. Like just do it and uh, smooth out your gear later. It doesn't really matter. All right. With that said, one thing is left to be said: bandits kill all. Because as you can see, we need all the freaking passive points. That's it from me. I'm Yoji, and I will see you in the next one.